I'm in Somerville. In my first video on requirements engineering, I made the point that this is a difficult process. There are lots of problems and challenges that we face. And in this video, I'm going to develop this in a bit more detail and explain why these challenges arise. I'm going to talk about the fundamental reasons why the requirements engineering for complex systems is always going to be a difficult problem and why I believe that it's never going to be the case that it can be solved by technologies. I'm going to focus on four particular issues that affect the requirements and the requirements engineering process. These are changing requirements, the fact that different stakeholders have different views on or different perspectives on the requirements, the fact that we don't have any standards or standardization on how to do requirements engineering and the fact that requirements are affected and influenced by people's personal views and the politics within an organization. Let me start with this notion of requirements change. The requirements reflect the world outside of the system and in my initial video I showed these as a bridge between the world and the software system. Now the thing about the world is that it's not static, it's not stable, it's changing all of the time. In many cases we don't really understand the implications of these changes for the system as a whole. So we have to kind of project them forward and say well what will this mean and how do we have to change the requirements to reflect the world changes. And there are different kinds of change that may occur. So we may have technology change where some new technology may be introduced. There may be organisational changes where a company that's involved in a system procurement is taken over by another company and it's, it's changed and moved around, its structure has changed, hence changing the business processes and the requirements for the system. There may be market changes where we see that a, a new market, for example, the introduction of tablet computers has created a whole new market for apps. And this may actually put requirements where there's an expectation within an organisation that as well as accessing a system through a web browser, there will also be an app for this. There are economic changes where a business makes more or less profit one year and consequently it may have to change the requirements to scale up to a larger organisation or to scale down to an organisation that has to cut its costs. And there may be political and legal changes. If we have a, a critical system, a safety critical system say, and somewhere completely separate there is an accident, the laws may change to reflect the issues and problems revealed in the analysis of that accident and these affect the system that, are, that is being developed. So there's a whole range of sources of requirements change that can affect the overall requirements of a system. I've already talked about stakeholders and different kinds of stakeholder and certainly the different kinds of stakeholder have different perspectives on a system. They see it in their way. And this picture shows the number of possible perspectives we might have on a, a complex organisational system. There's obviously a user perspective. How do the operators and users of a system see that and how do they see the system supporting their work? There's a management perspective, those involved in managing the operation of the system. And there's also a customer perspective. A customer perspective are the customers of the organisation that are using the system. They may also be influenced by it in some way. There's an engineering or technical perspective which looks on the system in a quite different way than the end users of a system. And there's a regulatory perspective or a certification perspective which the where the regulators have particular requirements which they need to have satisfied by the system. And finally, there's a social perspective. There's a, and this again is particularly important for critical systems. 
where society is affected by the operation of these systems and they will see them in particular ways and often through the politicians their views will be represented and will influence the requirements for a system. These different perspectives are not consistent, they'll all come up with different requirements and they'll often be conflicting. They will be asking for different things from the system. So the requirements have to be a compromise, trying to keep as many stakeholders satisfied as it's possible to do so. When it comes to eliciting specific stakeholder requirements, the key problem that we face is that stakeholders are busy people. Providing requirements for a new system is not the job of stakeholders. They have other jobs to do and it's always the case that they're busy doing these other jobs. Doctors are seeing patients, accountants are managing finances, university professors are teaching and doing research. They're influenced and affected by a new system but they are very short of time to think about what's required and to interact with requirements engineers. And this has been the biggest problem in requirements engineering that I've personally come across, of actually getting stakeholders engaged in the system and away from the job they're doing is really incredibly difficult. What it means is that you very rarely get detailed requirements from stakeholders. You simply get vague statements and you have to go through an iterative process of making requirements proposals, taking these back to stakeholders, changing them on the basis of their feedback and so on and so forth. It can be a long drawn out process because just simply arranging meetings can be difficult. Another problem we have with requirements is that once we've developed a set of requirements, we don't have any objective way of saying how good these are. We can't measure them. We don't know if one set of requirements is better or worse than another set of requirements. As a consequence, we can't measure or assess the impact of a system on a business. So we can't tell which set of requirements are best for that business. The way in which we improve quality in many domains is to have repeatable processes. So we learn from experience what are good processes to follow that results in high product quality and we replicate these processes and we can learn from our own experience or from the experience of others. And sometimes we embed that experience in standards so that by following the standards we can be reasonably confident that we will be adopting a good process. When it comes to requirements, the problem we have is that the level of detail we need in a requirement specification varies quite dramatically from one area to another. A safety critical system needs an immense amount of detail. A game is something quite different. It's often the requirements are expressed as a storyboard, pictures of what might be happening. Because of that, it's very hard to learn from others and to come up with product and process standards that encapsulate good practice. So essentially every organisation is on its own in deriving a, an effective requirements engineering process. Finally, politics and people. Many of the system requirements are affected by the politics and the personal goals of individuals in an organisation. The stakeholders are not making decisions about the requirements on a rational basis. They're not making decisions about what requirements are best for the job, but what requirements are best for them. Maybe they don't want the system to intrude on their everyday work, so they try and exclude most of their work from the system. Maybe they see the opportunity for uh, advancement within the organisation, so they want the requirements, so they, they come up with requirements which actually will show that they are doing effective work. Lots of different reasons, but we do find that the non-technical, non-objective, subjective issues are often very powerful in setting out requirements. And from an organisational perspective, one of the most significant is where 
the central management and organization wishes to have more centralized control. So they set out requirements typically for centralized systems rather than distributed systems for different parts of the organization are using different systems. The requirements engineers, the people involved in deriving the requirements are not part of the organization. They don't understand the organizational politics, so they can't challenge the requirements. They don't know that these are not necessarily rational technical requirements. There's also a very common situation where the people in an organization don't want a new system. They're already using existing systems. They've embedded these in the way they work. They're happy and comfortable with them. They don't see the need for a new system. And sometimes the purpose of a new system is not to actually make them more efficient, but to make the organization as a whole more efficient. So the personal gain for these individuals is limited. And as a consequence, they may passively or actively refuse to cooperate in the requirements engineering process. And it's always easy to do that because they're always too busy. In summary then, we can never make requirements engineering a problem-free process. There are very fundamental reasons why it's always going to be difficult. And these difficulties cannot be solved by technology. And these reasons stem from change, business change, technical change, economic change, from the fact that we have diverse stakeholders who have different views of what the system should actually do. The fact that we don't have standardization, we can't have standardization across industries. And so we can't have a standardized and, and normalized requirements engineering process. And the fact that requirements are about politics. Remember requirements are the bridge between the real world and the system. And in the real world, in the, the world of <coughs> business, decisions are not always objective, but are often made for subjective reasons which help or hinder particular individuals. You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.